Hey everybody, this is Sully with Five Freaking Onion Rings, and I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3 way too much, but there is an effect on Or in the Red that I just love, a skin effect, and DaVinci Resolve lets you do it very easily with a few clicks, so I'm going to show you how, just in case you need that. Here we go. We're just going to jump right into this, and first off, you're going to put your clip into the timeline, so yay, clip, and look at that cherub shaped dude, I mean, he is just cheruby. From here, you're going to go to Effects and drag an Adjustment Clip. Adjustment Clip for the same length, roughly. You can go longer if you want, but same length is good as your clip. On the Adjustment Clip, you're going to go back to Open Effects, and you want to do a search for Fast Noise, and drag that onto your Adjustment Clip. And you're going to get this, kind of ugly, but that's okay. Now, the easiest way to do this is slide it off to the side and adjustment clip you want to first I always invert dark regions and that gives you the little snaky look and that's cool. I would say you can color tint but don't. It's not worth doing any colors and I'll show you why later. But anyway, invert dark regions. You're going to scale however you want. This is a lot of playing. The height, height Vertical ratio, just leave it alone. Uh, otherwise, you get some weird things. Detail level is where you can make things look veiny or you can make them look very clean. I did find in playing around, if you go too clean, it just looks looks random. It doesn't look good. The other thing, uh, it's easy to see if you just jack your contrast way up. I mean way up. Like you have to click in here and just run your mouse to the right to get it very high. Detail balance again doesn't do anything if your detail level is not but what I like to do is detail level on high and then I play with my balance until I like it. Uh, that's too noisy and that's too clean but when you get into here you start to get something that looks that looks pretty good. That looks like a little veiny, a little weird, a little, little odd and that's what you want. Uh, go down to auto animation and there are two ways to animate this. Uh, the easiest way is to hit seethe and just move it to the right slightly and you get a very slow seethe. You can tell it's barely moving or you can get a faster seethe. I would recommend going kind of slow just because that looks more organic and it looks pretty good. If you don't like how that looks, one of the easiest way to change it is just change your scale. Um, you can also find a spot where you you like where you like it, but change your scale. You can change your details, make everything look the way you want it to look, and uh, sometimes see things go a little faster if you want, and that's okay. So you can see you're just trying to make some movement that is. To me, that's a little fast, but it's it's really up to you what you want. It's also up to you how much you want. And I found that when you get too noisy, it looks noisy. So, you know, just be careful, dude. It's, it's all up to you, whatever you want. You do you, boo. It is all good. And from here, see, so you, can, you can drag your detail level down. If you do this, you'll get like a more uh, cyberpunk-y look, but you go up. And from here, see, I like, I kind of like that. That's a little blurry. It'll look good when it's seething. Gives you kind of a smoky, just a little effect. If that's too little, you can do, you know, lower your contrast a bit. I just found that higher contrast makes it stand out better. Um, now, I moved it off to the side here so I could just get a clear look. If you do this and you do global, bend, global blend... You can kind of do that and see how it will kind of look, but that's, just, that's not helpful. So anyway, that's why you move it off to the side. The other thing you're going to do off to the side here, once you're happy with how this looks, and th these will be your veins. So when you have veins rolling around, these are your veins. And you do it with fast noise, just like that. Now, what you need to do, and where it gets a little different, you're going to right click, render in place and that's important because it's going to make a movie file oh no nope, i'm sorry so from here you're going to right click new compound clip and you create 
So yes, new compound clip. Now you want to go adjust your colors, and I want that to be a little more red, so try to just slide your, your color offsets to where you like. You can do gain. Whatever you want to do though, you want to keep these areas white. And trust me on that, otherwise you'll have a pain in the butt. Whatever you do, don't turn it, the white spots to anything but white. And see that starts looking pink, but that's, that's pretty good. I just need a little bit red, just a bit. Then you go back to here, right click again. Once you're happy with that, you right click again and you're doing render in place. And I just pick QuickTime here, 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 here and render. It's going to ask you where, so select your folder, select. It's going to take a second or 10. All right, so it's rendered out. That was the key to this whole trick. So go here, you're going to click. You want to go over to color, do your little color corrections, whatever you need first. Pretty simple, make yourself look not so cheruby if you look like me. And just remember that our compound clip eight is the one we want. We're going to drag that over into here and keep it off to the side. From here, you're going to search for my favorite, which is Surface Tracker. And you'll actually want two of them for if you have a beard or hair or something like that. But the easiest way to do this, Surface Tracker, Bounds, and you're going to click, 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 click. You're going to track every place. You can either do one bound, and I like to do it just one click through here really quickly. By the way, I'm doing this in real time, so what you see is what's going to be the finished project, but not exactly what is the product from the intro, because, again, I'm doing this one real. I want to just show you how easy this really is, because it takes, like, no time. Uh, we're going, and see, for me, I'm going into the hair a little bit, just because it'll look a little more organic, but I'm trying to avoid my nose, because that just looks weird when you have a dark spot and avoid my eyes and my eyebrow um, and avoid the big nostrils, which holy cow, I got some big nostrils. Oh boy, we all have something, right? Now when you get to the eye, it's a little complicated, but you just want to go through your eye, make sure you leave out your eye, unless you want the, the effect to cover your pupil, which I did not. So didn't want it to affect my pupil. So yeah, notice how I'm just going to cut out the eye, make sure it's not uh, not going to be affected by the effect. Affected, A, effect, E, for all you English lovers. And I'm cutting out my eyebrow to make sure it is not affected with an A. So see, so now we have eyes are cut out, eyebrows are cut out, they're not going to get the effect. And that's okay. And then I'm going to do another bound around the lip just for a little bit. It's small touches that make the cell effects, you know? Because if you see something that's out of place, it looks out of place and it'll drive you crazy. And one more bound. You're just clicking over here to bound. This allows you to set up multiple tracks on the same one. Now this uh, is uh, so you can track multiple places which is good, but I also want to do multiple types of uh, blending. So, the way, easiest way to do this is first track your first one. So you click mesh, it's going to draw its own mesh. You want to hit track, back and forth. It goes about 4 FPS for me. Um, until it takes about a minute for this clip. Now sometimes, depending on your graphics card, tracking is faster than mine, so don't don't take five FPS as being good or bad. But if you notice, it's doing a pretty good track. I'm, I'm impressed. And it does a lot of motion, and it's trying to stay out of the hair. But you don't have to be perfect on this effect, and that's what I like about it. Also, when you're doing track, make sure you track back and forth here. So make sure you use this track. It's back in where you are. And if you notice, it went back to a spot. That's not where I started, so it looks a little off, but that's okay. That is exactly what we want. Now we're going to result and EA. So now we are going to clip and you, this is your compound clip that we dragged over. So if you remember, dragged, and you're going to go green to green and that's going to look awful. And you're going to go, there are four here, they're alpha outputs and you take them to the bottom and you'll get different effects, but you can't see them very well right now. So why can't you see them? It's easy. Go to surface tracker, result, 
where it has compositing. Since this is white, you're going to want to multiply, and you're going to get that, which looks weird. Why does that look so weird? So there we go. We're going to get that. So that is what we're effect looks like if you go straight from that's what the effect looks like if it's straight and that looks a little little odd not great two things you do softness you want to kick it up a notch and that will keep you from having hard edges so you can have it coming in and out yeah so softness i just kick it all the way up and sometimes even more but all the way up works that way it just kind of fades in and out and your other is to drop your opacity if you need to. So you can drop your opacity if you need to. And you hit play and you'll notice it sticks really well. But that looks kind of weird. So this is where your alphas come in. And each one of these will have a different effect on it. So you might have to turn up. I don't like how this one looks. And see, this is what happens when you color grade your compound clip too much. Drag over your clip that we did earlier. We'll just drag up to green. And the bottom one's alpha channels. So you can move that way, can move that way, can move that way. You're, you're trying to pick what you like. So you, you have four choices. They all do something different. But I tend to like the bottom one just because it, it gives a nice little bit of contrast and whatnot. And from here, if it's too much of an effect, you can drop your opacity a bit. And that way you get this type of effect that's a little smoky and swimmy. That looks pretty good. Or you can go up. So that way when you put it on, it doesn't multiply anything. And since you did subtlety, you've got it going a little bit into the hair, a little bit over there. It stays out of the eyes and stays out of the eyebrows. Now, another thing you can do just to really sell the effect is to take another surface tracker, drag it down, slop it in here, and actually do a track along the hair in some of the hairier spots, if you have hair. If you don't have hair, then don't. Good for you. I didn't realize that I had hair that much, but you can see skin beneath it. So you're just going to do a simple track through. And since this one is hair, the reason I'm doing a second track is because we want it to have to look lighter. So when this finish, so when this finishes, you can use the same compound clip, just go green to green, and then make sure you do not do that. So you do not want to use that, that upper alpha, but the lower alpha. When you're in here, you're going to go to result. You want to soften up a lot again. You might want to contract a bit. So that will expand or contract. See how it, you can get it go out or you can get it to come in. Since I had some spots where it went off, there we go. And you want composite type, back to multiply. And this time you do want to drag it down a bit so it's like you're looking through hair about i'm doing about half maybe a little bit more or less then you hit p to maximize and you can see you've got it coming through the hair it's a small effect it's very subtle but it's one of those things that you notice when it's not there and see how it goes back behind that hair even that's the way you want it to look it's just subtle but that's the extra little something once you get to this stage and you're happy go back to your timeline so now you have this stage, looks pretty good. Now, if you want to make any adjustments to this, you want to stabilize it, say you're, you're doing something, you want to stabilize it, you can't just come over here and stabilize, so don't do that. What you do want to do is right click and do new compound clip, call it finalize, enter, and this will allow you to work it like a normal thing. So in this case, I want to actually do want to stable. Okay. It should be pretty quick. Okay. So yeah, you can stabilize it. You can zoom in a bit. Whatever your heart's desire is, you can do it, but you're doing it to the compound clip. The other thing you can do is go over here and color boost, color drop, midtone, Check your scopes, which you'll see I am nowhere near skin tone, so I like 
Do a little bit of skin tone. There we go. Gives you a little bit of a green. Drop that mid back. See? And there you go. And you can still see the little subtle bits in the beard. You can see this. And you have it all as one clip. It just looks cool. And that wraps it up. All of that. I would say you can do it in about two minutes. And, um, yeah. Say I like this one better. Once you render a few of these, just save them off somewhere because um, you can use them with anything. So I'm going back to my compound clip. I'm going to decompose in place, clips only. Looks weird, but that's my original. Go back to here. If you ever want to switch out, you, you're like, ooh, I want to try something different. You can. You just switch your inputs. See, that one doesn't look as good, but I did it in a few seconds. And I didn't color it. As always, if you enjoyed this, like and subscribe, and thank you very much. By the way, what I wanted to say about DaVinci Resolve is it's the one software that I personally have no qualms buying because for $3.95, you get a lifetime. There's no subscription. There's no nothing. It's just buy the software, and it just keeps updating, and it just keeps getting better. It keeps evolving. It does stuff like this. 18 is amazing. So that's all I wanted to say about that. Uh, if you have qualms about buying the software, this one I can wholeheartedly go over because my Premiere, if you don't pay for the subscription, it doesn't work. So yeah, uh, I don't like subscription models, but that's where we are. So y'all take care. Have a good one. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you later.